So after months and months and weeks and weeks of speculation and analysis and coverage, I'm here to offer my official predictions for the 2019 Canadian federal election. Now, this is an NDP aligned and biased channel. I'm very transparent and open about that. But I want this video to be relatively unbiased, analytical, you know, objective take on what I think might happen in the election and how that's going to affect the following parliament and government. And so my top line prediction is that the Liberals will win the most seats, but the Conservatives will be close behind, perhaps winning more votes in the process. But because their distribution isn't as good, that's why the Liberals will have a higher seat count, maybe with fewer votes. So what's really going to matter there is that neither of them, in my view, are going to be close to 170. In fact, both could be south of 140, meaning that they could be more than 30 seats away from a majority government. And that means that for any stability, those parties would have to find some kind of support and cooperation from other smaller parties. And that's where the NDP and Bloc come in. Now, I project the Bloc to be somewhere between 35 and 40 seats, but their status as a coalition partner is really, really hard to cement. And that's because as a separatist party, at least understood as a separatist party in English Canada, not a lot of people want to make formal deals with them. They might work with the Bloc on piece by piece matters, but to build a formal coalition with the Bloc is seen as unpalatable in much of English Canada. Not to mention that the Bloc has seemed to indicate that they don't really want to do that either. So they might end up with 35, 40 seats and therefore could have a major bearing in splitting the liberal conservative deadlock, but they don't seem to want to use their power in that manner. Conversely, Jagmeet Singh, who I also project to be between 35 and 40, but perhaps a little bit higher than the bloc. My prediction is that the NDP will be the third party in this parliament, a couple more seats than the bloc get, will have that opportunity to hold the balance of power. And Singh has made it clear that he won't use that balance to help the conservatives. So the liberals, should they fall behind the conservatives by a couple seats, or should they be first place but well, well away from a majority, will need the support of the NDP to form a government again. And so if they're willing to do it, they could have a viable coalition or supply and confidence partner in the NDP. And so a crucial number to look at here is 170. Again, that's the majority number. Do the NDP and Liberals together add up to 170 on election night. Whether the Liberals do a little bit better than expected so the NDP doesn't have to pull as much weight, or whether the opposite happens, where the Liberals are only at 140 or even 130, but if the NDP can win 45 seats, then that's 175. If they can do that, they will have the option to form something of a stable governing coalition, which could last more than a couple years that minorities typically do. Look to British Columbia, for instance, which has had for more than two years now a very stable government, which is not led by the biggest party because the Greens and the NDP formed a deal of cooperation that's worked fairly well. That could happen here, whether Trudeau is in first or second. And so then we go to the smaller parties. And so the Green Party in this election started off with a lot of optimism and hope. The projections were showing them winning about four seats, but had the potential maybe to win six or seven expanding from their current base in southern British Columbia, maybe to places like Fredericton, New Brunswick, and Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. But they've ran a very poor campaign, and that's been coupled with the rise of Jagmeet Singh, meaning that I don't think they'll be anywhere near four in this election. In fact, I'm projecting that they're going to probably win two, but one is certainly a very strong possibility. As you know, the Green Party had one seat with Elizabeth May, its leader, holding it. And then they added another seat in a by-election this past summer in southern British Columbia. And they did so in a relatively convincing manner. But even that seat right now is in danger. So I'm projecting two for the Greens. But that second one is in real danger. I don't think they're going to have the ability to win three or four right now. With the NDP's rising strength, I don't think those NDP ridings that the Greens were targeting are as precarious as they were even a week and a half, two weeks ago. And finally, for parties, we go to the PPC. The PPC under Maxime Bernier has never had a chance of winning more than one riding. That's why I was so iffy about them being included in the debates. But we are where we are. 
And Maxime Bernier, I think, is going to eke out a win in his riding. The riding that he long held as a conservative, but now holds as PPC leader, or at least seeks to hold as PPC leader. I think he's going to edge it out. His name recognition is going to help, and the fact that whether you like him or not, his performance in the French language debate was rather good, and I think he probably won over some Quebecers, and I think in his own riding, there will be a sense that this guy deserves a place in Parliament. Now, what that means for the PPC brand, for the PPC ideology, it's hard to say. Will Bernier be an effective ambassador for his party, or will he be a quasi-independent? That we don't know, and we can't predict right now, but I would say that Maxime Bernier will remain in Parliament. Then we go to the two high-profile independents. Now, of course, hundreds of independents run in every Canadian election and in every provincial election as well, but most of them lack the resources and public name recognition and volunteer base and fundraising base and all of those sorts of things to give any serious go at winning a seat. But in this election, you have Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott who sort of left the Liberal Party around the whole SNC-Lavalin scandal and Justin Trudeau's treatment of Jody Wilson-Raybould, you know, insofar as it related to that scandal. And so I don't think Philpott will have a good chance of winning her riding. I think she's going to do well as an independent, but she's going to ultimately lose her seat. It's not a very easy seat for the Liberals to hold in this election, even in normal circumstances. So I think Philpott is going to fall short in that one. It's not really an indictment of her per se, but just that all of the context put together makes it a real, real tough go. Jody Wilson-Raybould, conversely, has a bigger profile, a more winnable riding, has a bigger, you know, national story, you know, that, that you know, Philpott was sort of on the side of that, that snc Lamalan scandal, not to diminish her role, but, you know, Jody Wilson-Raybould was the star, you know, Philpott was a supporting actress, if you will. And so Wilson Raybould, I feel, has a much better chance of winning her riding. And I'm going to predict that she will. That's not me saying I want her to win it. I'm cheering for the NDP candidate in that riding, of course. But I do think she's going to edge that one out. And that's going to be an interesting scenario. Because what will she do? Some people have suggested she's playing the long game. And that if Justin Trudeau flames out, she knows that she can go back to the Liberal Party with an I told you so mentality and maybe, you know, come, come in from the outside and say like, look, we're going to do things my way. Or because she has a close relationship with Elizabeth May in the Green Party, some suggest that she might edge herself towards the Greens, especially if Elizabeth May wants a bit of an out right now from federal politics. She wants to, you know, take a step back from leadership. Jody Wilson-Raybould could well be her successor. And so we don't know what Wilson-Raybould will do and how she'll conduct herself as an independent in Parliament, but do look to see her there. So to summarize, guys, I'm looking at a liberal plurality with the Conservatives right behind and maybe with more votes overall. And the NDP in that 35 to maybe low 40 seat range, having the balance of power because the bloc won't be able to manifest the balance of power given their status as a you know, Quebec separatist party. Look for that NDP liberal cooperation, which may happen and may lead to some really interesting policies and directions. Some of Canada's greatest policies have come from liberal NDP you know, cooperations. And it should be noted in a recent abacus poll that that was the only outcome that Canadians liked. Canadians didn't like any other outcome. They didn't like any other particular majority. They didn't like any other form of cooperation. The only one where Canadians said they were, would be at least somewhat happy was the NDP and Liberals working together in a minority government. And we just might get that. So that's just my predictions, guys. That's just my, you know, guesses, for lack of a better term. Maybe educated guesses, but, but still guesses. So I want to know what you think. I want to know if you think that the Liberals are going to win this. Do you think a majority could happen? Some of the pollsters and some of the aggregators are showing that a majority government is still possible, but it's very unlikely. What do you guys think? Do you think the polling is missing anything? Do you think, for instance, the polling is missing young people? Some have suggested, and I'm not saying this is wrong. In fact, I'm hoping it's right, given my biases, that the young people of this country have not been adequately polled and Jugmeet Singh's support may be underestimated. A Nanos poll, one of the last polls that came out of this election, showed an NDP surge of about two and a half points. If that continues into tomorrow, could the NDP outperform expectations? 
Does the way that seats all fall benefit one of the two bigger parties? Do the liberals end up with a big, big, big minority because they get lucky in a few seats? Or conversely, can the conservatives edge out a victory because in those key areas, they win those very, very few last votes needed to make it all happen? And so related to this is that tomorrow night, starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, which is when the polls close in Atlantic Canada, the first you know polls to close in the country, David Dole and I, on his Twitch channel, will be doing a live stream kind of following the results, talking about the seat totals as they come in, talking about the narratives, talking about what the government might look like as we get more and more information. So if you like me or you like David, hopefully you like us both, do check that out. We hope that it's going to be a little bit more you know, informative, a little bit more, you know, casual than the very stuffy formal, you know, election night coverage that you're going to get from the CBC or the CTV or global or what have you. So guys have a good one. Do remember to get out and vote. Do remember to soak in the election day energy and I'll see you tomorrow night on David Dole's channel.